Glory to God, whose power working in us could do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Amen. Good morning, Good Samaritans. Thank you all for braving the cold tundra of Indiana to come to worship service this morning. I am grateful that I'm not the only one here. <laughs> so thank you. It is very, it is very cold. Um, I want to start out with a prayer. So let's pray. O oh, Holy One, it is a gift for all of us to be here and to be in the season of Epiphany. Enlighten us. Help us to learn more about who you are and who you call us to be. We thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us and everything that you have provided to us. Help us not to take these gifts for granted. Help us to share them and to be so aware of them that we can deliver the good news to all your people. You gave us a very simple imperative to follow you. Here we are. Amen. So the question today that I have for you is, why are you here? Why are you here? I know you guys were thinking it was a rhetorical question. <laughs> it's not. Why did you brave this cold weather to come here today? These are my people, she said. I think we're done. <laughs> These, why else are you here? To recharge your battery. To recharge your battery. Yes. Clara. Lucy had to serve today. OK, yes. Youth group. Here for the youth, yes. Yes. <laughs> Dean said I would feel better coming. Thank you, Dean. Yes. Yes. Why else? Why else are you here? Yeah, yeah, yes, you are, we have that. Yes, yes. You have to be here. There's a number of you that have to be here today. And we thank you for brave, braving the weather. Heidi? To worship together. Yes. To recommit. To recommit. Excellent, excellent. Lucy, to drop off shoes, to drop off electronics. And perhaps let me just posit to you that maybe it's to learn a little bit more about being a follower of Jesus Christ. Is that fair? <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Sure, why not? Okay. How about maybe a little bit of discerning what God is calling us to do? what God is calling you to do, what God is calling Good Samaritan to do. You may have caught this, but the lessons this morning are about call stories. I think it's an honor to follow God's call wherever you take it. It's an honor and a privilege. And each of us has a calling, every single one of us. And all calls, I think, are hard. And maybe even the hard part is hearing that voice of God telling you, enlightening you, letting you know what you are to do and who you are to be. And not all calls you've heard, you know, well, he was called or she was called or they were called to ordain ministry. Not all calls are to ordain ministry. Each and every one of us has a calling. Now, mine happened to be to the ordained ministry. And I will tell you, I fought it for a very long time. I went to seminary later in life. Um, but it's a very humbling of things, if you will. You know, it's a gift to be able to, to study scripture and to be transformed by that and then to offer an interpretation to you all, um, to be with folks at their hardest moments, their hardest times in life, and to be with people at their most very happiest moments in life and it's an honor and a privilege to be there with them to proclaim the gospel to offer absolution to consecrate the sacraments and to bless now as many of you know I was a preacher's kid and and quite frankly I never thought I would be here in fact I would have bet against it <laughs> uh, but God has a funny sense of humor and, and that's for another time that's another sermon 
So this Thursday marks the 18th, or this Thursday, January 18th, marks the anniversary of my ordination to the Sacred Order of Priests. Ten years. Thank you. It was, it was a beautiful day, as you all will remember, some of you will remember. Almost all of my family was present. And the, the right Reverend John L. said, my father ordained me on behalf of the Bishop of the Diocese of Indianapolis, Catherine Maples Wainick. And it was a very special day, and it took a very long time to get there, to get to that. And it also took a lot of support from a lot of people, many, 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 many people. Um, the people from my sending parish of St. Francis in the fields. Uh, it's a long, you may not know this, but it's a long, drawn-out process when somebody says, I think I'm called to ordain ministry. Um, they want to try to make sure that, that uh, all, the, all the silly people don't get by. Oops, they made a mistake. Um, I was trying to think of a very polite way to say that. Um, but the people of St. Francis in the field, the discernment committee there, lifted me up. They raised me up for ordination. I'm very grateful to them. I would not be here today if it weren't for their support and their backing. And I would also, again, like to thank publicly my entire family for the sacrifices that they have had to make over, the, make over these years. And I especially want to thank my best friend, my beloved, Kim. It's been a really long and hard road, and she has held my hand the entire way and whispered in my ear when I'm not humble enough. <laughs> so I'm working on that. This is a, a never-ending transformation process that we all go through as followers of Jesus Christ. I want to thank the, the mentors and the bishops who taught me and guided me and gave me an opportunity to serve in their diocese. And a big thank you to all the people who trusted me to live into the vows that I took that day and to be part of their lives. I'm grateful. It's very humbling and I'm very grateful. Thanks be to God for that. And it's been my practice over the years to reread my ordination vows that I took that day because I'm constantly trying to live into them and it's in our prayer book, it's on page 531. And Bishop said, address me as follows. He said, my brother, the church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share in the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, a priest, and a teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, and to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and to serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach to declare God's forgiveness to penitent sinners, to pronounce God's blessing, to share in the administration of holy baptism and in the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and to perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of his grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. And then he said, my brother, do you believe that you are truly called by God and God's church to this priesthood? And I answered, I am. Do you now, do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and study of Holy Scriptures and in the seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ? I will. Will you endeavor so to minister the Word of God and the sacraments of the New Covenant that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received? I will. 
Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all whom you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life and the life of your family or household or community in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to your people? I will. Will you pers persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace, both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? I will. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and the power to perform them. And I answered, Amen. Then Bishop said, said, the prayer of consecration. He laid his hands upon me along with the other priests who were present and ordained me to the sacred order of priests. This was and is my response when Jesus said, follow me. And it continues to be part of my call story. And I continue to strive to live into those vows which seem to get harder and harder every single year that I, I say them. And these scripture lessons that you heard today, they're, they're call stories. And that is listening for the voice of God, guiding you where you are to be, reaching out to do, reaching out to you, telling you what you are to do. And the Lord called Samuel, but Samuel thought it was Eli calling him until he was told by Eli how to answer. How do you answer the call? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This is one of my favorite stories. And Samuel becomes a follower of Jesus. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. There's a story about a young woman who wanted to go to college, Purdue. But her heart sank when she read the question on the application blank that said, Are you a leader? Being both honest and conscientious, she wrote, no. And she returned the application, expecting the very worst. To her surprise, she received a letter from the college that stated this. Dear applicant, a study of the application form reveals that this year our college will have 5,452 leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it's imperative that they have at least one follower. In today's gospel, Philip comes to Nathanael and proclaims that he has found the one who Moses wrote about. He's found the Messiah, and it's Jesus of Nazareth. Now, while we don't know what expression Nathanael had on his face when he responded, I think it's safe to say that he was, his response revealed what he was thinking. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Now, Nazareth was a, a tiny little town not even a major city, kind of, you know, a sleepy little suburb. Can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip answered, come and see. Nathanael is only mentioned twice in the Bible, and this is one of them. And some scholars believe that he was a follower of Jesus, and then later his name was changed to Bartholomew. But this story is about the call of the first followers, the call of the disciples. It's how they answered when Jesus said to them, follow me. And that's also what Jesus says to each and every one of us. Follow me. And here's the good news. It's a conscious decision that you get to make. And you and God get to decide what that means and how your call is going to be performed. You, are pro you may be living into your call as you are right now. What, are, what you're doing now. Discipleship and Christology, Christology translated from the Greek as the study of Christ, they fit together closely because discipleship, first of all, is the willingness and readiness to walk with Jesus. It's not to blindly be bound to abstract set of codes, but consent to a costly, joyful relationship. And the way we do that is showing up here 
and working with each other, walking with each other. And by walking with each other and walking with Jesus, we learn who Jesus is. As we learn who Jesus is, we learn what it means to follow Jesus. So my next question for you for today is, how do you answer when you're being called? And I think we can just follow the scripture. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen.